Good morning. Welcome to Live for Five with Pastor Ben. I am glad you're joining us today. Uh, we get we get into a very common text today that a lot of people have come to understand, and I think we misunderstand it or too quickly gloss over it. So I'm I'm glad to dig into that with you today. Uh, I I noticed that there were some people that didn't like the whole orange thing yesterday, and we're totally content to not wear orange. I like orange. Almost went with another orange shirt today, but I, I, I pulled out some yellow. Um, good morning, June. I'm glad you're joining us today, as well as Bev. It's great to have you with us as well. Well, let us make our beginning this morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it, from the rising of the sun to its setting. The name of the Lord is to be praised. Amen. And that's a similar theme to what we're going to be talking about today in our verse of the day. If you go to the YouVersion Bible app and you pull out that verse of the day, we're going to be reading from Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothing? Mm. This is an interesting text, because right off the bat we'd go, well, yeah, but how long can we live without food and, and clothing? So we, at first glance, have an issue with this. Um, this is the first of five rhetorical questions, obvious questions, that compare and contrast greater things and lesser things. And this was a very typical way of teaching for rabbis in uh, the first century world and, and before in a Jewish context. Since the proper attitude towards earthly possessions is to understand that there can only be one master in the life of of a disciple of Jesus, this invitation to be free from worry naturally follows then. When food and clothing are your master, the inevitable slavery is to worry whether or not there will be enough of these things that are necessary for life. But, however, when you serve your Father in heaven, because of the Son who came to earth. There can be an entirely different take on the food and the clothing that are a part and parcel of what it means to be a human creature. But there seems to be this human tendency to redefine luxury things as needs and then mere wants as genuine needs. And so Jesus of Nazareth, he doesn't preach about prosperity gospel, that you do this so that you can prosper. He proclaims that our Father in heaven knows that you need these things, such as food and clothing, and that he will provide those things for whom he treasures more than birds and beautiful flowers. Now, we like to argue this one with Jesus. Maybe you don't even verbalize it, but we like to argue this one in our minds with Jesus, don't we? Well, yeah, Jesus, but come on, I mean, I need food. I need shelter. I need clothing. Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? These are fundamental base things in life that I need. But how much? Most North American Christians have far more than they need. flat out, more than they need. How much do we throw away of food? How much clothing goes unused? Or do we actually need? So in this sense then, when we say something like, well, yeah, but Jesus, we need it. He, does, he knows that. God knows that. But we're still in a state of fret and worry over that. The Good Shepherd laid down his life for you. 
so that he can provide you more than daily needs. Now, this is also an interesting note. Jesus knows you need food. And yet at the same time, Jesus spends 40 days in the wilderness not eating. Because the food of the Spirit is feeding him. The Holy Spirit was tending to him. Angels ministering to him. Yes, food is important. Clothing is important. But even food and clothing can get in the way of truly trusting God. And so this is, this is why we pray. Jesus adds this into our prayer. Lord, give us this day our daily bread, but not just food, spiritual food. All the things we need to provide for this body and life. And if we pray for that, also we can pray that we don't worry about those things. And, and that we can focus on the love of our neighbor. This is a challenging one because this one slides by us. And, and I think we argue this one with Jesus a little bit more than we'd like to admit that we do. Let us pray. Good shepherd, you have given your life for us. And you've provided far more for us than our daily needs. Lord, help us to see the things that we can't provide for ourselves and cling to what you have done in those promises so that we can also learn not to worry about the things that you have also provided for birds and lilies. We ask that you'd help us to trust you even more and to share and show that trust to those around us so that they may give glory to you who sits at the right hand of the Father. We pray all this in your name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Blessings to you. Put that worry aside. Pray about that worry um, so that we can better live it out for the kingdom of God. Have a blessed day in the Lord.